Second generation inhibitors versus crizotinib is still, I think, an open question and is being addressed in ongoing trials to actually randomize head-to-head -head against crizotinib. They certainly look very um, potent like they uh, in the clinic as they do preclinically um, compared to crizotinib. Um, but whether they'll really replace crizotinib in the first line setting is, I think, unknown. Certainly, second generation EGFR inhibitors um, looked essentially the same as uh, erlotinib um, when they were compared in the first line setting. But they also didn't have very much activity in the setting in the second line setting. The ALK inhibitors are unique in that they have a lot of activity in the second line setting, um, and at least in the first line setting in Japanese populations, electinib has shown really quite tremendous response rate and um, duration of response. So I think it is certainly possible that they may replace crizotinib ultimately, although only the head-to-head -head studies will tell us that for sure, whether they'll really translate into a more durable response than crizotinib has. There are planned head-to-head -head studies of both electinib versus crizotinib. Um, there's an ongoing phase two randomized study of the area drug ASP26113 AP26113, excuse me, um, and uh, there are ongoing studies of cetirinib or LDK378 versus crizotinib, so all of them are being compared to crizotinib. The primary difference between the second generation inhibitors is uh, their potency, and it was thought really that the um, role or the niche that they would uh, have is for crizotinib-resistant mutations that occur within the ALK gene itself. Many of those inhibitors are, have very good potency against known secondary mutations that occur in the ALK gene after um, treatment with crizotinib. However, what we've seen in the clinical trials that have been done to date is that these agents seem to have activity across a broad spectrum of crizotinib resistance, meaning the response rates that we've seen with all of the agents have been well above 50 percent. We know that secondary mutations in ALK occur at a rate of 30 percent or so, and there's many other mutation, uh, many other mechanisms of resistance that occur outside of the ALK gene. So that says to me at least that the issue may not be that we're just getting those, at those resistance mutations, but that these are more potent drugs in general compared to crizotinib, and that may be why we see the activity that we do. There are a number of second generation ALK inhibitors in development right now, and they all have a greatly increased potency compared to crizotinib. It is not clear yet where they will differentiate themselves in terms of uh, relative to one another in terms of their use. Um, so there, what we know preclinically is that um, different inhibitors have different activity against different secondary mutations and that there may be differences in that regard. So if we really could identify the mechanism of resistance in each individual patient, we may be able to match up what is the appropriate second generation inhibitor. However, I think realistically that may be difficult and practically, again, what we've seen is that the potency of these agents is such that they have kind of broad spectrum activity uh, more than we would expect just based on their preclinical data. So I think the differentiation may come indeed in differences in side effects um, or potential differences in, for instance, CNS penetration. There are differences in side effects that we've seen. Um, Cetirinib, which is probably the furthest along in development, also has had significant toxicities, particularly GI toxicities, um, which have very frequently resulted in dose reductions for a large number of patients from the recommended phase two dose. Electinib, on the other hand, has had actually quite minimal toxicities um, and hasn't had a real issue with dose reductions um, and was able to be advanced quite beyond the recommended phase two dose without a lot of difficulty. So there may be, that may play out as we get more data from more patients in terms of choosing one versus, versus the other. In terms of CNS penetration, it's not yet clear what the differences are between the different agents. Um, it is felt by the makers of electinib, Roche, that um, that may have uh, preferential activity in the brain because it is not a PGP substrate, unlike some of, unlike crizotinib and some of the other agents in development. Um, whether that will really make a difference in terms of the CNS efficacy, we don't know yet. We're still quite early in actually evaluating CNS efficacy. One of the newest molecules in development, which is an ALK and ROS inhibitor from Pfizer, um, has particularly high levels within the CSF and was actually developed to be able to cross the blood-brain barrier. So that may differentiate itself from all the others, but it's too early to know that yet.